contribution of government to that uh, outcome. So mm. tourism is an actual mine of money that we really need to tap into. And we'll Absolutely. Do that this morning. It's time yes. now for the 6 a.m. news. Welcome to John News at 6. The news is live on Jaw 99.7 FM and hits 103.9 FM in Accra. In Kumasi, we are live on Love 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions, including Bedarin FM Bumpurugu Klenam, Radio Bato, Gaskia FM Tichiman, and Radio Wow Wow. Get radio, TV, and online content on the MyJoyOnline.com interactive app for Android and iOS devices. Coming up, Shraj Balls threatens to drag government to the UN Human Rights Council of if it continues to frustrate and block the rights of protesters. We have details as he warns the EC police and others against stretching their independence to the detriment of the ordinary people. Also, minority on the health committee in parliament demands apology from the Kolibu Teaching Hospital as it says its decision to reverse the increase of dialysis treatment is merely an afterthought. Apologize. And they say, look, we are going to refund whoever was affected. And we have business later and also... Ghanaian musician Wendy Shea has for the first time spoken about her near-fatal accident. I, I remember all I was screaming was Jesus because it happened so fast I didn't know what was going on mm. and then I entered into a gutter. So that was why I realized, okay, I think I'm safe. We have details of this coming up shortly. Please stay. In our first story, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice boss, Joseph Whittle, says he will not hesitate to drag government and its agencies to the United Nations Human Rights Council if they continue to frustrate and block the rights of demonstrators to protest. The police a week ago applied for an injunction against the occupied Jalobi House demonstration to stop protesters, and it drew widespread condemnation. Mr. Whittle believes the right to protest is the right of every Ghanaian and should should be protected. He spoke with my colleague Raymond Aqua on Upfront. If we don't do it now and it is gone, what happens? But in effect, you can't do anything about it if the police dismisses your advice. No, it's an advice. You cannot do anything beyond that. Oh, the next thing is that we will we'll meet at the, the UN or the EU. We will, we'll, in our shadow reports, when we are sending, will indicate how uh, unfriendly our, our police are when it comes to policing demonstrations and, and protests. Mr. Witt also says that EC's refusal to bring this year's registration exercise closer to the people has been condemned by many, including political parties. He's insisted the position of the EC rests disenfranchising voters and undermining our democracy. It's a human right, uh -huh. and registration has to be enabled by the, the Electoral Commission. Because without registration, you can't even exercise the right to vote. So if you then disable that right, I mean that right to register, because we make it difficult for people to access says the place. Now they have to travel several days with guarantees. The next day, if they don't get to register, they have to come back. Two, three times. Why? You had Shraj boss Joseph Wattel there. Now the opposition NDC is dismissing claims by the Electoral Commission. It is busting minors to register in the ongoing limited registration exercise as part of a scheme to pad the electoral roll. The Commission says it has noted a worrying trend where so many persons below the age of 18 are registering. The Commission has recorded 7,561 suspected cases of minors in the exercise. But the NDC says 
as the EC is overflogging the issue. Mustafa Bande is Deputy General Secretary. EC is caught up in reducing the excess of the whole registration exercise to canvas for the passage of a law. By so doing, they must take the route of making on um, cards so they can get their CI through Parliament. Dr. Bosman Asari's Deputy EC Chair. We would like to use this opportunity to especially urge the government as a matter of urgency to provide the necessary support to the National Identification Authority to register all qualified persons ahead of the registration exercise next year. As Ghanaians, we have the responsibility to protect our democracy. The Electoral Commission strongly believes that having a voter register with only qualified persons is very central to protecting the country's democracy. And now to health. The minority on the health committee in parliament is demanding that the Kalibu teaching hospital issues an apology, saying that the hospital's decision to reverse the increase in dialysis treatment cost is merely an afterthought. The ranking member of the committee, Kwabna Mintakando, believes that the hospital's reversal was motivated by a desire to mitigate the damage caused by its initial decision to raise the prices from 365 Ghana cities to 700. 165 Ghana cities. The hospital had initially announced an increase in the cost of dialysis treatment, which caused distress among patients like Georgina Apia, a 54 year old woman living with a kidney condition. Even getting food to eat is difficult. I have to beg before I eat. My mother, who used to support me too, is also blind now. I don't have any helper. I used to sell fish at the fishing harbor and used to get support from my friends, but not anymore. <laughs> That's the story of Georgina Apia having a kidney condition. However, following public outcry, the Kolibu Teaching Hospital decided to backtrack on the price hike. But ranking member of the Committee in of Health, Kwabna Minta Kando, says the hospital must apologize. Yesterday, we said that they must stop. Yes, they have stopped. They've retreated. And we are telling them that or else we will go there. And anybody who will bring me any receipt to that effect and has gone there and they have refused to either, I mean, attend to him or her for free or refund his money to him, I'm ready to leave that, uh, I mean, refund. The honorable thing to have done is to apologize. And they say, look, we are going to refund whoever was affected. The explanation is not thought, just to do damage control. Kwabna Minta Kando is ranking member on the Parliament's Health Committee. Now, minority in Parliament remains resolute in its quest to resist the planned measure of the National Investment Bank and the Agricultural Development Bank as it demands that the deal comes before the House. The NDC MPs have been addressing a news conference warning there will be severe job losses if government goes ahead with the plan. Listen to minority leader Dr. Kassiel Atavosin. Alhaji, Dr. Bawumia and Ken Ofuriata were Working closely with Mr. Printer, the Addison, have decided to either collapse the NIB or merge it with the ADB. We contend that collapsing NIB is not an option. Two, merging NIB to ADB is certainly not an option because it will come with its corresponding job losses. Already, we have issues with employment. We believe there is space for NIB to survive. Now, spokesperson of the Minority on Finance Committee, Isaac Adungo, tells Joy News government must fulfill the required legal mandate, has the call for the deal to be brought before the House, even though it will be opposed. And now, Ghanaian musician Wendy Shea has, for the first time, spoken about her near-fatal accident. Speaking with Andy Dusty on Daybreak Hits, the survivor hit maker attributed her survival to her strong faith. According to her, the accident occurred when she was returning home after paying her label mate, Kiki Mali, a visit and was most likely a spiritual ploy from her enemies to eliminate her. I was going home. I had finished creating a content to promote my new song, Everyone Cheats. I passed by my, my label mate, Kiki Mali, just to say hi. And then on my way home, all of a sudden, you know, I had to branch to my junction, junction and all of a sudden I, I felt like a big push, like, and I almost lost control. But oh, you were driving? Yes. I, I remember all I was screaming was Jesus because it happened so fast, I didn't know what was going on. Mm. And then I entered into a gutter. So that was why I realized it. Okay, I think I'm safe. So 
one. Musician Wendy Shea, then that's how we end the bulletin in our top story. Shard Boss threatens to drag government to the UN Human Rights Council if it continues to frustrate and block the rights of protesters. I am Amusi Nyamichet Thompson. Business is next on the Super Morning Show.